up for renewal by lucius daniel this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org reading by matt perard up for renewal by lucius daniel i'd give a year off my life too idle talk now but it was ghastly reality to kent howard kent looked at his young and beautiful wife and felt the weight of the years rest on his shoulders in her eyes he saw his heavily lined face and sagging stooped shoulders they stood just inside the long narrow reception room of the human rejuvenation plant potted palms and formal chairs reminded one of a human disposal unit i have a confession to make darling he said oh no howard not now i take for granted you've done the usual things in your youth but and we needn't have hurried so as you can see now we'll probably have to wait hours in this perfectly dismal place she looked as young and fresh as he looked old and dusty he thought so out of place in this kind of establishment he had always loved small women leah was small and vivacious and dressed a year ahead of styles no matter what happened he'd never regret having married her but this is something i should have told you before he said she put her hand on his arm i've been perfectly happy these past six months whatever it was i forgive you it's not that i'm talking about my age i didn't think you'd marry me if you knew how old i really was i put off telling you and figured you'd see my birth certificate at the wedding ceremony i never even looked at the silly old thing well darling i looked at yours and i felt a little guilty in marrying a young girl of twenty-three but the fact is i'm sixty-five i've been rejuvenated before i rather suspected it when you started aging so suddenly last week she said before that you didn't look a day over thirty but it doesn't matter it's worse than that leah his face worked convulsively i've been here twice before this is my third trip i'm too modern to act shocked howard if you didn't want to tell me before dear it's perfectly all right look darling perspiration stood on his forehead you don't seem to understand but then you never could add or subtract now listen carefully each trip clips five years off your lifespan everyone knows that of course but it's better to be young it's better to be alive than dead he said harshly but your doctors have given you a longevity span to the age of ninety suppose it was eighty instead of ninety oh dear you worry too much she said doctors don't make such mistakes they can't give me a guarantee you see three of my ancestors died from accidents the prediction of ninety years is based on the assumption that they would have lived a normal lifetime they make few guarantees you know all you men are such babies at a time like this yes but if it is eighty then i'll come out not a rejuvenated man but just a handful of dust oh that can't happen look at it this way he paused a moment while taking in her youthful appearance from now on i wouldn't look much older just a little grayer and perhaps more stooped then i'll have what's left of my longevity plus the five years this rejuvenation would clip off why howard dear leah sounds shocked you don't know what you're talking about an aunt of mine elected that choice and it was perfectly horrible she drooled the last few years of her life and was helpless as a baby why didn't they use euthanasia he asked the courts decided she wasn't capable of making a rational decision he wiped his forehead that would be a long time off darling we'd have so much time together in the next fifteen years but what would it be like if you were crippled with arthritis or some other disease you could divorce me if that happens i can also divorce you if you don't go through with rejuvenation you know it's the law you wouldn't do that his face was more lined than ever don't be silly dear nobody gets old these days 
who would remain our friends why everywhere we'd go people would point us out oh no life wouldn't be livable that sounds like a cruel and calculating decision to me howard said either i take a chance on dying or you'll divorce me you have no right to make such an accusation i married a young man who said he was thirty years old six months later i discover he's sixty-five now who's cruel and calculating please darling i didn't mean it look he pleaded i'll even sign permission for you to have a lover there's that young fellow that's always around maybe it's happened already she stood back from him howard you're being perfectly nasty just like an aged person you read about five million dollars and all of it yours when i die a natural death he put his hands in his pockets the street door opened just then and a young man came toward them with a light springy step he offered his hand to howard who took it slowly how are you skipper and you leah i came as soon as i got your message he is worried mike leah's face had brightened and now he's insisting on growing old i've been through the ringer twice before you see howard said in a low voice i don't think you have much to worry about mike said those medics know their business aging is a nasty process leah wrinkled her nose as if she smelled something offensive maybe you can convince him mike leah is right you know mike said a few years ago i visited the old age home there's only one left you'd be surprised at the amount of suffering old people go through before they die cancer angina broken bones strokes arthritis rejuvenation won't work on extremely old bodies longevity has run out why does it have to clip off five years worried howard it's the old age governor they found in the pituitary gland they can turn it back but the shock takes off about five years oh i know what's in the medical articles howard growled remember i've been through here twice before but the sun was so warm this morning it was like seeing everything for the last time i felt like sitting down and letting everything drift that's a sure sign that you really need rejuvenating said leah after it's over you'll be making me a golf widow again won't he mike of course he'll come out raring to go howard looked from mike to leah and back at mike age was no match for youth if love hadn't started between them already it would soon at the end of the long room a door opened and two nurses entered starched and antiseptic your room is ready mr kent one nurse said howard shuddered everything is so horribly familiar the pill to erase the worry which doesn't work the cart you ride on which makes you feel like a carcass the little bump as you enter the regeneration room then you get a hypodermic and crawl into a long boiler tank you're just nervous dear said leah a dismal miasmic cloud settles on your mind and you decide you wouldn't go through it again for anything in the world mike put his arm around leah as if it were the most natural thing in the world he'll be all right my darling howard looked at them and then turned wearily to the nurse i'm ready the nurse walked down the long room with a stooped man and disappeared beyond the door did you tell him about us asked mike of course not what a man doesn't know won't hurt him are you mrs kent asked the other nurse who had remained behind yes the doctor said to remind you that the fourth time is very dangerous the nurse said you'll have five years and six months without it but possibly only six months if it should be successful better take the first offer leah said mike leah smiled i found a gray hair and a wrinkle this morning love better six months of youth than a thousand years of old age she went into his arms don't worry about what happens love you'll have a lot of fun in the next seventy years he kissed her and held her closely i've got to go now she said i'm so grateful you were able to get the forged birth certificate 
Her high heels tapped rapidly on the tile floor as she walked down the long room with the other nurse. "'Good luck, mother,' he called after her. End of Up for Renewal by Lucius Daniel